assess the current and future well-being of a community, region, or nation, we need to use a comprehensive wealth framework that includes the full range of assets that individuals and places own. A clear understanding of what is meant by wealth is essential if we are to make progress in pursuing and measuring rural wealth creation. The learning objective of this module is to define wealth and to provide a foundation for later modules that focuses on measuring rural wealth and identifying strategies for rural wealth creation. If you do a search on the internet for wealth, you will find websites devoted to the accumulation of financial assets, wealth management companies, and you will see images with stacks of U.S. dollars and piles of gold. This reflects the idea that wealth creation is commonly thought of as the accumulation of financial assets, or, put another way, a wealthy person has a lot of money and other financial assets, and a wealthy community has a lot of wealthy inhabitants. But wealth is more than piles of dollar bills, bars of gold, and fancy cars. When we think of wealth as only monetary accumulation, we are not acknowledging the profound value of clean water, active and healthy workers, and stable roadways. All of these are critical non-economic factors that contribute mightily to societal well-being. Also, these economic-centric measures, like income or gross domestic product, can be misleading and we may fail to recognize the depletion of these other assets in the process of financial wealth accumulation. If a geographic region prospers by clear-cutting its forests, this short-term measure of prosperity does not reflect the reality that the region's long-term future may be simultaneously imperiled. By learning to recognize and value multiple forms of wealth, we will come closer to realizing a sustainable society and avoid ending with polluted water, smoggy air, political gridlock, and crumbling elementary schools. We obviously need a broader definition of wealth. Drawing on recent work developed by the Rural Policy Research Institute and the USDA, we define wealth broadly to include all assets, net of liabilities, that can contribute to the well-being of an individual or a group. It's easy to identify these assets when they are depreciated around us. When there is polluted water or a crumbling educational system and limited access to affordable health care. To understand rural wealth, we must consider natural resources, healthy citizens, the infrastructure of buildings, and the creative ideas of a community. A comprehensive view of wealth must be the focus of well-being, whether considering individuals, households, communities, neighborhoods, regions, countries, or planet Earth. In this comprehensive definition of wealth, we should include the sum of all capitals held by individuals or places, net of liabilities. Assets held by individuals exist regardless of the location of the person. Typical individuals' assets are education, health, experience, culture, values, friendship, real estate, properties, automobiles, stocks, bonds. Assets held by places are located in the places regardless of the location of the assets' owners. Typical place-based assets are housing stock, public infrastructure, environmental quality, social networks, to understand the concept of wealth, we need to be familiar with two fundamental concepts, stocks and flows. For example, if wealth was a bathtub, the stock represents the level of water in a bathtub, while flow corresponds to the amount of water flowing into the bathtub from the faucet and out of the bathtub through the drain. So let's take the bathtub example a step further. It is important to have in mind that other capitals would have other examples of stocks and flows. Financial wealth is a stock and represents the quantity of water in the bathtub held by people or places at a certain point in time. Income is a flow of financial capital and represents the rising amount of water in the bathtub and contributes to increased financial wealth over time. Consumption is also a flow of financial capital and corresponds to the drainage of water from the bathtub, which includes direct consumption or financial capital depreciation, since all forms of capital tend to depreciate over time. The difference between income and consumption represents net savings, which increases financial wealth over time if positive and depletes if negative. Perhaps the critical distinction between stocks and flows can best be understood by thinking about an individual household. Net worth is the household's stock of financial assets minus liabilities and its annual income is the flow of dollars generated from employment, dividends, rent, and perhaps other sources. We expect that wealth, stock, 
and income flow are positively correlated because greater wealth often contributes to higher income. Without stocks, there can be no flow. We include eight types of assets or capital in our definition of comprehensive wealth. Physical capital, financial capital, human capital, intellectual capital, political capital, natural capital, social capital, and cultural capital. These capitals represent a robust and comprehensive measure of both tangible and intangible wealth and create the basis for assessing current and future well-being. These different forms of capital are often complementary. By investing in one type of capital, we can increase the returns to investing in another. Equipped with these key concepts, we may now turn to defining and providing examples of the eight forms of capital for this comprehensive rural wealth framework.